Hey everyone, welcome to the MRP Tech Podcast. This is episode 114. My name is Matt and this is the weekly podcast discussing everyday tech for everyday people. And from time to time, I like to approach technology topics in different ways. I try to make things interesting. I come, try to come up with interesting topics that I think most people would be interested in. This week's show, I'm not so sure about. I'm not sure if this is a topic that my listeners would be interested in or not, but it's a topic that I am super interested in, and I'd like it to bring it to all of your attention. So as we go on, if you feel this isn't the topic for you, feel free to skip this episode and move on. Catch the next one. This week's episode is on lucid dreaming, what it is, how you can do it, and some of the tech that you can use to induce uh, this lucid dreaming state. If you're not sure what lucid dreaming is, lucid dreaming is the ability to be aware of your dreams, to control them. Uh, This lets you sleep better, sort of experience new things in a dream state, and practice real life skills that you want to get better at. So let me start by going way back for me. I have always had really strange and interesting dreams ever since I was a kid. And one dream that I can think of way back when I was a kid was I was being chased by something on an island, and I don't remember exactly what this was. But all of a sudden, I became aware that this was a dream. And in order to protect myself from being chased, I told myself, I'm going to move my arm up, and I'm going to drop my arm and hit it to my leg. And as soon as my arm hits my leg, I'm going to wake up. Now, I had no idea that this was actually going to work, but I did it, and as soon as my arm touched my leg, boom, I was awake, and it got me out of a dream. And so that's sort of a a trick that I used from that point forward. Anytime I had a a scary dream, I kind of did that. I would wake myself up. And had somebody told me back then, when I was a kid, that this was called a lucid dream, becoming aware that you were in a dream state, consciously aware And that instead of waking yourself up, you could actually stay in your dream and manipulate the dreams. I would have been really interested in that. So as we mentioned, lucid dreaming is the point where something in your dream triggers you to realize that you are now in a dream and that everything that was happening before was all just a dream and you have a choice. Most people will suddenly wake up because this is a giant surprise. They get, uh, they either are, are caught off guard, they may be scared, they may be um, super surprised, and they wake themselves up. Now, before we go on, this is something that in our culture, a lot of people don't talk about dreams in their culture, in our culture. And due to our modern day lives, busy schedules, that type of thing, most of us just brush our dreams off as, uh, insignificant, not important, having no substantial meaning, those type of things. And while that is the case for a lot of things, you know, uh, I always consider dreaming, you know, sort of our brains defragging and trying to make sense of all the loose ends that that we have in our day. Uh, But lucid dreaming has been scientifically proven. And in the mid 70s, there were two sort of well-known figures that did a lot of research in in improving lucid dreaming. Uh, Stephen LeBarge is one of them. You can look up his research online. And Robert Wagner both did a lot of research in the lucid dreaming field. And here's what they did. They did a study on on somebody who claimed to be a lucid dreamer who could actively become conscious in their dreams. And so they uh, hooked him up to a bunch of equipment and studied rapid eye movement in his sleep. And they had a simple test. If he were to become conscious in a dream, then he should move his eyes left to right, left to right, left to right, eight times in a row. And this machine would pick it up. Well, um, they hooked him up and and I'm not sure how long it took in order for this to happen, but at one point he did fall asleep and was able to do this experiment and he was actually in a dream. He actually not did it not only once, but he did it three times. So he moved his eyes left to right eight times, paused, did it again, paused, did it again. And so then they wanted to sort of replicate this 
And uh, so he was consciously doing this in a dream. So they wanted to replicate it. And what they did is same scenario. They wanted to prove it again. And he became lucid. He was aware in a dream, moved his eyes left to right eight times. I think the story goes he tried to do it a second time and then proceeded to do it a couple more times after that. And when he woke up, uh, they asked him, uh, they looked at the, the data and said, this doesn't really look right. What happened? And he goes, well, I tried to move my eyes left to right eight times. And I tried to do it again, but I actually messed up and I made a mistake. So I did it again two more times just to make sure that it was was uh, given clear data. So he consciously knew he made a mistake and then went on to do it two more times just to uh, have that data available for when he woke up. So these two pioneers basically went on to have careers in writing many books about lucid dreaming, uh, why lucid dreaming is a might be a benefit to some people. We're going to go over some of those topics a little later on as we go through this episode. But here's something that I want you to think about. We spend one third of our lives asleep. Now, most of us who pay no attention to our dreams, that's one third of our life that we have wasted. Now, that might not sound like much, but if you live to be 90 years old, that's 30 years of your life just gone in an instant. Now, if you paid attention a little bit more, most people, when they start having dreams, they say that they can't remember them or they, they don't have dreams themselves. And that's not true. Everybody has dreams. Uh, in fact, there has never been a person um, who of of good health that has that has been proven to never dream. Uh, you might you just might not remember your dreams. So why not live that part of your life too, and start having some fun in the dream state? Now, there are many beliefs about lucid dreaming, and I'm not here today to talk about them. Um, the great thing about lucid dreaming is that it does not affect your health in any way. You're not going to get hurt uh, experimenting in dream states. You're not going to um, cause any physical damage to yourself. There are many myths and misconceptions about it that you might read online. And what's great about it, again, it's not dangerous. There are no ethical, there's no moral or no religious objections to lucid dreaming. In fact, most religious cultures, if you dive deep, uh, lucid dreaming is a big part of, of that culture. And going back to things like Buddhist monks uh, for thousands of years have been doing something called dream yoga, which is basically the same thing as lucid dreaming. There are more practical meanings and uses for it in their culture, but it's basically the same thing as, as lucid dreaming. So as I mentioned earlier, most people will wake themselves up when they realize that they're dreaming, either by startling themselves awake or uh, becoming scared and realizing, I don't want to be here. I want to wake up and I want to wake up now. There are many people out there who might not understand what's happening when it comes to, to things like becoming aware in a dream. And there are several states of, of dreaming that your body goes through. And lucid dreaming happens, happens in the REM sleep when your, your eyes uh, rapidly move, usually in your deepest state of sleep. And if you wake yourself up too early, you might find yourself in that state of, uh, that, that most people don't like, that state of sleep paralysis, where your body is paralyzed, but you are sort of awake and you're sort of in between a dream and awake. Your muscles naturally uh, become paralyzed when you sleep, and that's to avoid you flailing around and acting out your dreams while you're sleeping. So this is a perfectly natural state. And a lot of people panic when they are in this sleep paralysis state. Um, they, they don't understand it. They might see, see strange figures or that type of thing when they're in this state. And it's because they're still dreaming, but consciously awake. Now, again, most people wait it out and they wake themselves up. But what if you took a different approach? What if you tried to stay in your dream? What if you tried to, instead of waking yourself up, relax, become grounded in your dream, and then try to actually enjoy a dream consciously aware that you're dreaming? You can do it. It's really easy to do. It just takes a little practice. Now, when you first start doing this, you may experience that sleep paralysis, 
and you might panic the first few times. But I would encourage you not to to give up on it, not to get scared, and just to kind of just relax with it. Um, some people experience what are called false awakenings, which these are these are kind of fun too, where you are in a dream, you realize you're dreaming, uh, and you wake up, and you might get out of bed, you might walk down the hall, start uh, doing your morning routine, and then realize that you something isn't right and you're actually still dreaming again. Um, and then some people experience this two or three times before they actually really wake up. So that can be a little bit scary in the, in the same process. Um, you know, not really sure, are you awake or are you still dreaming? Uh, this happened to me many times. And a lot of people, when they first start lucid dreaming, they, they may have nightmares at first. And this is often, I think, contributed to your your consciousness, your, your waking consciousness, trying to make sense of this new thing that they've never really experienced before. And so a lot of things come, come up in, in here. And again, nothing is going to hurt you. Nothing is going to, to, uh, harm you. This is all just like any other dream, except you're now aware you're dreaming. So here's what lucid dreaming can do. Um, there are many different philosophies. Some are really way out there. Uh, some are religious based, some are more scientific based. And the way that I've always taken lucid dreaming is you're sort of looking inward on yourself and into your subconscious, similar to hypnotism. That's my best explanation for it. And when I first started lucid dreaming, um, and I become aware in a dream, and I try to start moving. It was always very difficult. I could never move because my my body still had that sleep paralysis. And I always tried to find a way to explain it. And I was recently reading a book and somebody explained it as basically pulling a bucket of water out of a pool. And it's very difficult to do is that pulling sensation. And many people experience this when they wake up feeling like they've been ripped out of a dream. This, you can also do it in, in, in when you become conscious and start trying to move that, that really, uh, feels really difficult to move. Well, that gets easier with time. The more that you have lucid dreams, the more it's easier to move around. And so then you start experiencing a dream a little differently. You can go up to people in your dream and you can talk to them. You can ask them questions. You can um, go to places you've never been before, You places you want to see. You can travel in space. You can. A lot of people like to fly in lucid dreams. So you can do lots of crazy things and experience lots of really great dreams. And some of them are just as realistic as real life. Y you can reach down and you can pick up uh, a handful of dirt and you can feel the dirt moving through your fingers. You can taste foods. You can hear things. You can see things. You can have conversations with people. And many people feel that when you're lucid dreaming, you're basically having conversations with your subconscious. You're having conversations with parts of you that you, you maybe need to work on, parts of you that um, are trying to, to help you or or trying to uh, better your life. In most cases, uh, people find lucid dreaming educational and inspiring and uh, benefits their health. You sleep better, that type of thing. So that's why I'm interested in it. And that's the way I've always looked at it is, is you know, when I have this crazy dream and I'm talking to a couple of figures, it's usually a part of me somewhere that um, maybe needs a little work or something like that. I don't know how to, how to explain it in that sense, but here's how it all started for me. Okay. So I'm going to share some stories and I don't usually do this stuff on air, but I'm going to share stories just because I want you to see where it all started for me. So several years ago, maybe four, four years ago now, um, I had some really strange dreams. One of them was just after I lost my grandmother and it was all something that was perfectly expected. Um, she was 91, I believe, and she lived in Florida, which was the entire continent away and I could never really get down to, to see them. And so a few days went by after she passed away and I had a dream in which, um, Basically, what happened was uh, some of her kids who were still alive, uh, one had passed away, and then um, they they sort of were all together, and 
all of a sudden I see my, my grandmother in the dream. Everybody's hugging. And then I hear the words, goodbye, Matt. And I was instantly shocked and I woke up and I felt like it was my grandmother saying goodbye. Now, that's a pretty powerful thing. And you could you could go either way. I'm not going to say this in the podcast, whether it was actually my grandmother saying goodbye or was this my subconscious telling me, uh, you know, trying to fill that need. But I instantly felt the gratification that I got to say goodbye. So that was kind of an interesting dream. So I started researching uh, having a message sent uh, in, in my dreams. Cause it happens very irregularly where I have a message that's given like goodbye, Matt, or, uh, something else. And it really fascinated me that number one, either my mind is doing this or, uh, an outside source is doing this. So I'm not going to go either way. I'm, not, I'm just going to say that's what fascinated me. And a, a year went by and I'm not really paying attention to the date. I I don't realize that the one year anniversary of my grandmother's death has come up and um, I'm, I'm just busy at work and I, I'm just plugging away normally and I have another dream. And in this dream, the word says, hello, Matt. And I wake up and I, what day is it? What day is it? And it was the actual day, the anniversary, uh, a one year anniversary that she passed away. And I also heard her voice uh, just really blew me away. And so I, I really got into lucid dreaming in the meantime and tried to figure out ways to lucid dream, which we're going to talk about in, in a few minutes. Um, so that's what got me started in the process. And I'm going to explain a couple of things as, as the podcast goes on, on how you can experience lucid dreams. So there's a couple of different things that will really make it easier for you to lucid dream. The first thing you need to have is good dream recall. And if you don't remember your dreams at night, basically you can will yourself to remember your dreams. So you just tell yourself over and over, I will remember my dreams when I wake up. And you could say that over and over and over until you uh, finally do in the morning. Uh, the trick is to not get up right away and, you know, stay in bed and don't move and try to remember where you just were. And eventually you start to remember a part of a dream a full dream, you start to remember two dreams, three dreams, I've, I've remembered as many six or seven dreams. And you start to uh, start to remember, hey, I did all this while I was sleeping. And uh, part of good dream recall, a lot of people like to uh, log their dreams, they like to keep a, a dream journal. That's something that I've tried to do, I don't really do it a whole lot. And I wish that I, I kind of did more. Um, but when you do that, you start to pick up on some of the irregulars, irregularities that happen in dreams. Um, and you start to pick up, oh, if I would have just realized at that point when things got really weird in my dream that I was, I was uh, now, uh, that's a possibility I could have become aware. So that's usually when I become aware in a dream is when, when things don't really make sense. So to give you an example, here's a story. Um, I had a dream of, uh, I was at my house that I grew up in and uh, there, every, there's lots of people around uh, and all of a sudden this police car shows up and a police officer gets out and, and I'm, I'm about ready to be arrested for something. And I was like, well, I didn't really do anything. And, and so I start talking with the officer and I, and I managed to talk my way out of becoming arrested. And all of a sudden an ambulance shows up and it's one of my my students that shows up and i realize i'm in a dream i was like this doesn't make sense at all why is everybody why is this happening and um, out of the back of an ambulance one of my students shows up and this student happens to say we really need you to know don't trust the locals and i had no idea what that meant that didn't make any sense to me don't trust the locals well come to find out uh uh Within the next couple of weeks, coming months, um, there's a lot of things going on in our neighborhood, and um, there's a huge construction project that's about to happen. Uh, the whole neighborhood is up in in um, in arms about uh, a building project. There are all sorts of other things that are happening, and um, 
that message, don't trust the locals. Had I taken it seriously at the time, I wouldn't have gotten um, sort of really screwed over. Um, but <laughs> so that's something that happened in my dream that uh, a message that came up and I ended up getting screwed over on, on a bunch of different things, but we won't go into them in the podcast. But um, had I, and I, it wasn't until afterwards that I realized that message, don't trust the locals, uh, would have um, saved me a whole lot of time and energy. So uh, that was another interesting dream. So so having dream recall is is really an important thing. Other things that you can do uh, are what's called reality checks. Now this is where you know it seems kind of strange, but if you do them during the day, uh, you can train yourself to all of a sudden do it in a dream. So uh, many people in the daytime uh, will ask themselves, "Am I am I dreaming? Is this a dream or am I awake?" And or they will try to do something that they could normally do in a dream. Like uh, if you take your finger and push it through your palm, you can't do that in, in reality. But in a dream, your finger will go right through your palm. So if you, tr- if you do this enough, you'll start to do it in a dream and then you will realize that you're dreaming. Just a trick to get you to start dreaming. Another thing people do is they hold their nose and try to breathe in. And in real life, it's difficult to do, obviously. But in a dream, you'll take a full breath and it's no effort whatsoever. Some people like to just look at their hands and... Um, say, ask yourself, am I dreaming or am I not? And you do that a bunch of times before you know it, you'll do it in your dream and you'll be good to go. So there's that part of it. And then lastly, just having uh, the intention of having a lucid dream, reading lots of things on lucid dreaming. Uh, You can watch lots of videos, you can read lots of articles, just becoming interested in the topic and believing that you can do it is is really important. So, uh, So number one, having good dream recall, doing these things called reality checks, and then learning some of the tricks to uh, persuade yourself to get into a lucid dream, uh, which you can find all over the internet. Uh, And for me, I have good luck with it. Um, Do I have lucid dreams all the time? Absolutely not. I may have one a month. Uh, And but when I do, I'm becoming better at it where now I can have more fun and experiment uh, and and really enjoy it. And in the process, um, I'm not getting upset when I don't have a lucid dream. I'm not uh, becoming aggravated. That just makes it more difficult. So think of it just as a fun thing to try and do. And I'm going to put lots of links in the show notes on, on lucid dreaming. But so, so here again, you're, even if you're not having a lucid dream, your dreams will become more vivid and you'll start to really enjoy uh, having vivid dreams. And again, you are taking time to experience part of your life that you normally weren't experiencing. And when I'm 80, 90 years old, I want to live back and say, I live my life to the fullest. So, um, I don't want to have those 30 years that basically I just slept through. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I'm looking for here. Um, now I'm not kind, I'm not a, an all the time, every single day, die hard, lucid dreamer. There are some people like that. Uh, but here's a couple of stories that, um, uh, of, of things that have been discovered or invented with lucid dreaming. Uh, the inventor of the sewing machine was having trouble figuring out how to thread uh, needles and basically he had a lucid dream, became aware he was dreaming. And I forget how the story goes. It was either he was, he was walking around and he saw people with holes in them or he saw objects, trees with holes in them and then realized that he could make a pin or a needle with a hole in it and he could thread the needle through it. And so when he woke up, he did that, and uh, the sewing machine was was then invented. Uh, there's also stories of computer programmers who have lucid dreams. Uh, they sit down with Albert Einstein in their dreams, and Albert Einstein shows them computer code uh, of, of issues that they're working on, whatever programming the software that they have. Uh, inside the dream, they become aware, and then they tell themselves, I'm going to remember this when I wake up. As soon as they wake up, they write it all down, and 99% of the time, it was actual correct code interesting to me. I I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, So I've used lucid dreaming to plan events. I've used lucid dreaming to uh, most of the time just have, uh, you know, uh, basically you're, it's like you're watching a movie uh, and you get to uh, enjoy something completely new and and, uh, that your mind has completely come up with. And uh, one of my biggest, my most funnest lucid, funnest, is that a real word? Uh, Most fun lucid dreams that I've ever had was I, I was sitting in a parking lot 
in, near uh, my hometown, there's a mall and there's a Target and there's a Lowe's and there's all these other stores around. And all of a sudden there's a stormtrooper walking through um, the parking lot and Boba Fett came and, and all of a sudden the stormtrooper and Boba Fett were in this huge battle and, and every you know and i just it was one of the most realistic things that i've ever seen um and it was probably the best fight scene i've ever seen in a from a movie but it was actually in a dream really kind of interesting stuff but i was consciously aware as i was watching do this so for me usually when i'm dreaming i suddenly become aware some of the tricks don't usually work for me but i try anyway and uh but but um Sometimes things in, in daylight or in, in waking life will encourage things in dreams. So I, I, one night I was letting my dog out uh, just before the we called it a night and, and went to sleep. And I looked up and I saw a shooting star. Well, when I dreamed that night, I saw a shooting star in my dream and realized, oh, this must be a dream. Um, sometimes it's, I was looking up and seeing an airplane in the sky and the airplane changed shape during the dream. And I realized I'm in a dream. So. Um, I've told you a couple of stories, but I have some really powerful stories that I want to share with you. Um, and this is what I believe uh, lucid dreaming can benefit people. Uh, a lot of psychologists, therapists, and that stuff now are recommending lucid dreaming for people who have post-traumatic stress disorder, people who have actively served in the military, that type of thing, um, who have served our country and experienced the worst things you can imagine. And um, they often suffer f for it uh, afterwards. And lucid dreaming is a way that you can actually uh, work through some of that stuff. You can uh, learn to cope. You can learn to uh, whatever is bothering you. Can, you can sort of fix it. Um, there are ways to do it. I'm not going to get into it in the podcast. But, but um, a lot of psychologists are, are sort of prescribing lucid dreaming as a way to uh, actually offer some relief for PTSD. Uh, so that's really cool. So I want to give you a couple of examples of, of things that have happened to me. And uh, so a while back, maybe two or three years ago, I was walking down the road with my dog and in real life. And I'm, I'm out for a walk and we're going down a straight road and it's time to turn around and head back towards the house. And when I turned, something in my knee sort of popped. And wasn't really major, but all of a sudden I just turned and then I had this nagging pain in my knee. And that pain was with me for um, a good year on and off. A good year. I, most of the time I had this dull pain in my knee. And it was one of those things where I was like, you know, I probably should go get this looked at. I don't really want to. I don't really want to have knee surgery. I can get around. You know, I feel I felt like I tore a meniscus or something or a you know, just it didn't feel good, but it wasn't debilitating. So I it's just a nagging pain. And so I started to get into this lucid dreaming thing at the same time. And as I got better at it, and I'm still not really amazing at it by any means, but I started reading about how people try to heal ailments in lucid dreams. So I said, you know what, I'm going to try this. And, and I have no idea how it's going to work, but I'm going to try it. So it took me a while because I said, I, as I said, I usually have one a month and, um, you know, sometimes I'll have a lucid dream and I'll wake right up. Sometimes I really have to, I find when I'm having a lucid dream, uh, some people look at their hands to stay in a dream. Some people spin to stay in a dream. For me, I have to like literally bend down and touch the ground and sort of ground myself and then I can stay in the dream. And then I have to tell myself I'm dreaming remind myself I'm dreaming and then I can have a, a longer lucid dream. And so this one point in time, I decided I, I was in a lucid dream and I decided I'm, I'm going to try to heal my knee when I'm in a dream. So not knowing what to do, I just said, okay, I'm in a dream. This is a dream. I'd like my body to heal my knee. And all of a sudden the dream turned into the, this really bright light and, um, this weird shaking sensation that I had. And when I woke up, the pain in my knee was, was gone and it has not bothered me since, uh, it's been several years. So that was pretty impressive. I have no idea how it happened. It could have been chance could have been just, uh, you know, the time for my knee to heal, but it had been bugging me for a long time. This happened all of a sudden my knee is better. So, and that's a true story. Um, whether or not you believe me or not, 
that's a different thing. We won't get into it, but this very true story. The next thing I want to share with you is probably the most powerful lucid dream that I have ever had. And I am reluctant to tell this story. I've shared it with two people that I know of, uh, my wife and my brother. And so, so here it goes. I was going through a rough time. Again, this was probably uh, at least two years, maybe three years back. Uh, going through a rough time. I did not really uh, have the, the means to, to uh, figure out what a solution to a problem would have been. So was, stuff was bugging me for a long time. And, you know, I, I was, I've been, I grew up a, in a religious family. We were raised Catholic. So as this message goes on, I don't want to uh, put out my religious beliefs on somebody else. But so so here's here's the deal. I uh, listened to audio books. I listened for for a while one time during uh, uh, Easter season. I listened to the Bible an audio book. In the Bible, it talks lots about dreams, uh, God coming in dreams and talking to people. So I said, you know what would be really interesting is to try that sometime and to see if that would be something that was would I could do. Could I do that? And so so I kind of figured out how do I want to do this? I don't really know how to do it. And so it was just kind of an intention that I had at some point in time when I had a long lucid dream to say, hey, uh, is this possible? So I'm in a dream. I'm at my old high school and walking through a cafeteria, there's a double set of doors that goes to a maintenance area. And behind that in real life is like a, a foundation there's some sand left over from when they built the building and that type of thing but i walk through the double doors and i find myself in an elevator and the elevator's going down and i thought this is strange i don't remember an elevator being here and i said oh this has got to be a dream so when the elevator stopped it opened up and it went to the outside and i walk outside and i walk away from the building. I look back and the building sort of, it's not my high school. It feels like a hospital. I'm looking back at a hospital and, uh, looking up, it's, it's sort of based on a hill and the hill sort of takes up the whole spectrum of my vision way out in the horizon, just goes up. And I see a bunch of people walking around sort of like an outside village with tents and everything set up like a community. And so I said, uh, and I'm still perfectly lucid, I'm aware that this is all a dream. And I said to myself, or I just said out loud to the, to the dream, I said, okay, God, I'm here. Where are you? And so I started walking up this hill towards all these people. And all of a sudden, this man comes down and, and makes himself known from all these people black hair, not the traditional God you would imagine, black hair, uh, just wearing normal clothes and sort of hard to distinguish whether this character figure is, is male or female, it's sort of ambiguous. You can't really tell. So at this point in time, I know this is the person that I need to talk to. And I start talking to this person and I just am in this state of euphoria that I have never felt in a lucid dream. And this figure asks, are you cold? I have a jacket. And just blown away, I said, no. And then the next question, are you hungry? I've got an apple. Again, blown away, I just, I, no. Then this, this figure says, walk with me. So we walk past all of these people in the tents and we start walking on this hill away from everybody else. And this whole time I know, I feel this is God. I'm walking with God in the dream. And at one point I stop and I just say, what do I do? And the response was, you like to hear yourself complain. I don't like complainers. If you don't change something, this is what's going to happen. And then my dream changed from the actual dream to what felt like I was seeing the future and everything was sort of falling apart. Everything was the dream itself was falling apart. And at that point in time, I got totally freaked out and I didn't want any, any more to do with that at all. I woke myself up. I did not want to see the future. So, so being totally freaked out by this whole situation, I woke myself up, but that was probably one of the most powerful 
uh, lucid dreams that I've ever had. It actually changed my life, and and uh, I I try my best not to complain, uh, and it actually helped me through a pretty rough situation. And uh, with that, I went and actually looked up uh, some of the things in there that I didn't really understand. There was actually a whole bunch of quotes from the Bible that I didn't really know uh, were in the Bible because I I. I don't really read the Bible at all. Um, and so there was lots of different things in there that were really powerful and it was as real as real life. I mean, it was, it was stunningly accurate, uh, dream. So that was a, a extremely powerful lucid dream and it has kept my interest ever since. Now I'm again, I, don't want to face, I don't want to go either way, what that dream actually represented or whatever. Um, but the point is for all of you, you can actually use this to your advantage. You can, uh, learn things in lucid dreams and it always seems to be a point of education of some kind and really interesting. Uh, if you've never done it before that first lucid dream where you realize you're dreaming. And okay. So the whole point of this podcast was to talk about some of the tech that you can use to induce uh, lucid dreaming. So recently I started downloading some apps. There are some apps for iOS, Android, uh, any cross-platform uh, device that you want to use, Windows, Mac, Linux. The, the app that I just downloaded that I really like for iOS is called Lucidity. Uh, if you go to the app store, you just type in lucid dreaming, on any device and you'll get the lucid dreaming apps. Lucidity really works as well. You can keep a dream log. You can learn about techniques and how to do lucid dreaming, lots of general information, and you can set alarms to wake yourself up. If you, if you want to do some of that part of the uh, technique, uh, in getting yourself to have a lucid dream. Now I don't do the alarms and that type of stuff. I just sort of wake up naturally at nighttime and during the night. So there are different types of things that you can do. Um, there is some open source software that's available. The one that I want to bring to your attention, uh, I'm not sure how often it is updated. Uh, there's something called lightened dream and you can get it. I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, there's, there's a Mac version. There's a source code. Uh, there's, there's different, uh, different things available for you. I stumbled across uh, what's called Open LD. It's it, it's an open source platform to help uh, everyone induce and explore the realm of lucid dreaming for research and for personal well being. That seems like a really interesting project. I think it is um, sort of just out there to help people that uh, are interested in the topic. And I haven't looked into it a whole lot. But if you are interested, I put a, li a link in the show notes about the Open Lucid Dreaming Research Platform really kind of interesting stuff. Um, as far as Android apps, I believe there is an, uh, an app called Awoken. That's really interesting. There are other ones available as well. I haven't read reviews. I haven't tried them at all, but there are apps available. Um, and for those of you who might not want to use apps, you can just take a Google doc and, you know, keep a journal, uh, that type of things, so, or just pen and pencil. Um, other things that people can do. They say uh, eating the right things, uh, focusing your mindset, telling your friends about it. Uh, just treat it as, as uh, you're exploring something. And uh, the most important thing is, is that dream logging. Uh, and, and that's what these apps are, are meant to do is uh, help you. Uh, you know, most people keep their, their phone within reach. So that's, that's really uh, a big thing that's going to help you try to do it. And if you're interested in it, what I would recommend is uh, Google searches. You will come up with lots of different uh, tips and tricks to get this to uh, to to work for you. And believe me, it will. It just takes. You, you don't expect it to take a night. Don't expect it to be amazing. Uh, as as and so as time goes on, uh, think of this as you're always going to constantly get better. You won't be very good at it at first. And eventually you start to learn the tips and tricks. Uh, I do have a book recommendation for you. Uh, this is an audio book. It is put out um, by Robert Wagner, narrated by Mel Foster, called Lucid Dreaming, The Gateway to the Inner Self. Now, this is not a how-to book. This is a book that explains the benefits of lucid dreaming and all the study and research that he's done for over 25 years of, of, of trying different things 
in a lucid dream. There are how to books available as well. Um, there are many different books. Some of them are, are better than others. Uh, but that's the best one I've seen so far. The, the gateway to the inner self. So all great, uh, tips and tricks to, to, uh, get you to, to have a lucid dream. If this is something that you're interested in and you would like to talk with me about it, you can send me an email, mrptechreviews at gmail.com. You can look and see about all the different things that I'm posting online over at mrptechreviews.com. You can also check out all of the uh, previous episodes of the podcast over at podnuts.com. And uh, I'm just going to end this now. So thanks everybody for listening. We will see you next time. <laughs>